We're going to start this puppy up. Clear, drop. And welcome back to building the Afforda plan. In this part, we talk about preparing the wings for fabric covering. There's a number of important procedures we need to accomplish on the wings prior to applying the fabric. So let's get started. Now here is how I arrange my wing for covering. I'm using my table again and it turns out it's perfect for what we're doing. The front and rear spar, of course, as you know from building, are wider than the table. So we want them that way, especially because our strut connection bracket can lean over the edge, no problem, on both sides. So the two strut connections will straddle on both sides and basically we're resting the wing on these cross members. So this will allow us to easily put our fabric underneath and wrap it up from the rear and then the front. We're gonna cover the bottom first. I want you to picture the top piece of fabric spanning on top of the ribs from one end to the other. At the very root end the top fabric has to end. And how do we end the top fabric? And the easiest way, and this may or may not be clear from looking at this camera angle, is that as the fabric comes across, we will wrap it around our last wing, and remember the fuselage tube is right here. We'll wrap the top fabric down to this uh, cross member that spans the front and rear spar and we'll end there. That way we'll have a panel of fabric that will go from this most inner rib down to the bottom of the wing and that'll work out real nice. Now the issue we have is that there will be some pull. As we tighten the fabric it shrinks and it's going to pull. And this rib is going to be different from the rest in that it doesn't have a neighbor uh, to the inside. It's our last rib. So to prevent too much pulling and flexing against this rib, we want to build some very simple supports that will give strength to this rib as we shrink the fabric. Now at the tip end of the wing, that's not a problem. We have the tip loop. We'll look at that later and that captures the other end of the top fabric. But down here we want to strengthen this. So let's take a look at one possibility. And here's what I propose. This is relatively simple to make and uses our existing components, our metal components. This is another piece of tube. I have a Clico down here. I will put a uh, rivet in place. And then up at the top, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, structural adhesive epoxy just to hold this in place but basically this gives a lot of strength uh, both downwards and inwards and I suggest we have maybe three of these one here one here and one further down to give that fabric all the support it wants so that there's no movement of this and so what I'll show here next is how I made this I just have it clico down Let's take a closer look at this. At the bottom end, I have a curved cutout. I'll show you how I made that. And there was the hole for the rivet. So this goes along our one inch pipe at the bottom. And at the top, I made sort of a saddle for the half inch. So the half inch tube sits in there very nicely and securely. All the pressure is in compression, so it's pushing down on it and the same with down here. So we need three of these for the wing, each one a different size, but these are 
probably a little easier to make than you're thinking. Let me show you where I got these. You probably still have these laying around if you didn't throw them away when you were building your wing ribs. Well, here's a bag of them. Where did I get these? These were the cutoffs when we made our wing ribs. Remember, we had the hole saw for the front spar, and these were the other side. Basically got thrown off, and they were short pieces. Uh, so you may still have these, which is basically going to save you a bunch of time in using a hole saw to recreate this, because this fits nicely on the bottom cross member. So the pre-existing cutout works very nicely against here, and this can be put into any position. And then basically we just want to measure the distance to wherever the rib comes, because remember we're going to have one here, one here, and one down there, and the distance is different. What's kind of nice is you don't have to measure exactly to get a good fit, because as you move this way and that way, the distance changes, so you can just pick a spot where it fits uh, the best after you have cut it. Now, how do you make the top saddle? In other words, the part that goes around the half inch rib. Well, let's take a look how I did that cut out. So in my small drill press, I have a vise and I put the tube through the jaws of the vise and uh, started, marked the hole where it begins. And then I have a half inch drill bit and simply drill down, matching the hole, and drill all the way through both sides. And that leaves me with this piece with a cutout, and of course, this piece, which I don't use, with the half inch saddle. And that's how I do it. This is just a portable small uh, drill press vise. Everything from Harbor Freight. And this is the way it comes out of the drill press. I'm actually using slightly smaller than a half inch. I believe it's a sixteenth of an inch smaller than a half inch bit. And that's why it doesn't cut the uh, the whole size. So I'll go put this on the band saw, break it in two, clean up the edge, but basically I have my piece here and the other end of the piece here and this gets thrown away. And then after fitting it in place, and of course you can move it back and forth to get the best fit, then you're going to drill a small hole and then carefully drill into the tube below and a rivet will go in there. Click over now and at the top I'm going to use some JB Weld which is epoxy and the purpose of that is to keep this from slipping around so it'll hold it in place but the the JB Weld does not provide the strength it simply holds it in place. That was better than coming up with a gusset or other means because we want to make sure we stay clear of the fabric going across and we don't want to wink, weaken the tube with any more holes than necessary. So that'll work out real nice. Would almost stay in place without doing anything but clearly the, uh, the JV weld, the structural adhesive will make sure that that does not wiggle out of place. And by the way structural adhesive is used in certified aircraft also. So it's um, a very useful tool in certain situations. And then here's how I have my three laid out. Now I'll go ahead and mix up some uh, epoxy, some JB Weld and uh, glue the tops in with the bottoms clicoed in place and then I can rivet the bottoms. It's just easier to get the adhesive in the proper places before I make the bottom attachment permanent. 
And here's what it looks like completed. Lightweight and very strong. That rib is uh, very firm now and will not flex when we put the fabric on. Another thing we want to look at closely are any obstructions that are going to get in the way of our fabric covering our wing. We're at the rear spar at the top and if we pretend this is the fabric sitting on top of the ribs we notice that there is a potential for problems at these junction joints where we have our nuts and bolts. Let's look at this one a little closer. If this one is in the way of the fabric going across, keep in mind you have some options. One is to replace the nut with an AN364, that's the low profile lock nut, and uh, a shorter bolt. And that will keep the height down considerably if you're running into issues with uh, clearance. And this is true at any of the other locations where that may be a problem. Looking towards the tip of the wing, we notice another possible obstruction here as the fabric covers, though we could rotate this whole support bar sideways if we wanted to and have the nut and bolt go horizontal. That's another way to get our clearance back if we need to. Right now it is definitely in the way of the fabric sitting there. So here's an example. I simply loosened up the bolt at both ends and we're going to rotate to get this out of the way. There we go and we'll tighten it up and we just cleared up the interference here. Obviously we can't do that to every one of these because the other end may not look like this but you can replace the nut with a half height nut or whatever is necessary to get the clearance. Now our next step is to wipe down the front and rear spars with your favorite solvent to get all the gunk off because this is where we're going to be applying our glue and tapes and uh, we want it nice and clean for the solvent, for the glue. So we'll use solvent and clean the front and rear spars. Now we have one more major task to perform before covering the wing and that is on the top of each rib we need to make some holes that will hold the rivets that will hold the fabric to the rivets that will hold the fabric to the ribs <laughs> so let's take a closer look at what I mean by that notice this rib we have a hole here here every five inches or so nothing critical about that spacing Along the straight part of the rib, we have a tiny hole. That's a 1 8 inch hole. And the reason for that is we're going to rivet our fabric to those ribs. In other words, we don't want to rely on just glue holding the fabric on there. So a 1 8 inch aluminum rivet with a large head will go through the fabric and hold that fabric in place to the rib. So our job now is to be able to drill these holes in the very top of each rib about five inches apart. Let's take a look at how that is easily accomplished. Now, while there's nothing critical about the spacing of the holes, I did mine about every five inches, we would like these hole spacing to be consistent across all of the ribs. So as you look down the wing, all of those rivets are in perfect line. 
and that is easily accomplished by creating a very simple jig. This is a piece of aluminum angle, about an inch by an inch. You can use anything larger or smaller. And I placed it over the rib and before I placed it over the rib, I drilled holes in the very corner and I'll show you how I did that. But this way, I can place this over any rib as long as I measure the edge of my jig down to the end of the spar, the same amount for each rib, then by reusing these holes and drilling right through, I will get very consistently spaced holes throughout the entire wing. And also by making sure that I have this right on the very top, all of the holes, when I use my drill, they will come out exactly on the very top. So let's take a look at how I made this jig. So we need a piece of aluminum angle, can be any size, mine's about an inch by an inch. Mine is approximately three feet long because we'll see that that covers for the most part the flat part of the rib. Flat meaning not the curved part up front but the flat part in the back. And then our spacing is about five inches from hole to hole to hole. I have eight holes in here so that's uh, 35 inches worth of distance. The critical thing you want is you want your holes to be exactly in the center, in the corner of this angle. So how did I do that? It's actually very simple, and I'll show you how I did that. Because once you drilled your eight holes, you're done. The jig is ready to go to work. The key is to use one of these devices. This is from Harbor Freight and this is for drilling uh, tubes. You put a round tube in there and it helps you drill straight through. Well, it also turns out that because of the V construction of one of these jigs, you can put a piece of angle and it'll sit only one way, exactly straight. And that way when you go to drill, the drill bit will go exactly down into the crotch, into the corner, and every hole will be exactly on the very corner. So if you don't already have one of these, these are great for drilling tubes because it helps you drill straight through a tube. This is called a, a V-groove device. So, Harbor Freight. You can also attach these directly to the bed of your drill press. So I made my holes with an eighth inch drill every five inches or so. Get it consistent. Again, nothing critical about the spacing. About five inches. And then you're ready to go. So by taking our jig, putting it over a rib, and it's important to measure the distance from the rear spar to your first hole. In my case it was seven inches. Nothing special about that measurement. But seven inches from my rear spar is where my first hole down at the other end is going to be located. And then it's also important to make sure that you have it so that the hole, the very corner of this angle is sitting at the very top, the very top of the rib. And that's easy enough to do because you can mark that at each end and then line up the very corner so you get it just right. Once you've drilled your first hole, you can use a Clico to hold it. I use a Clico at each end. And once I get that, then I don't have to worry about this rotating anymore and I can go and set the rest of them. Now because we're putting quite a bit of pressure drilling down, we don't want to stress the rib too much, I put a brace underneath 
the rib, in this case this can, and that really locks it down hard. Same with at the other end. But then it's very quick to go and drill all of the holes and just move from rib to rib making your set of holes. Here's an example of a rib that is ready to be drilled. I have drilled the first hole and the last hole. I did those first and again I positioned my last hole of seven inches from the rear spar. Nothing critical about any of these measurements but that way th this jig is in place and I can simply drill straight down through the holes and by repeating this for each rib all of my eight holes will be in line all the way across the wing. Now I deburred all the holes, didn't take very long to do that. And I want to point out that our inboard rib, the one with the supports, I did not drill holes and that's because the fabric is going to come across and take a turn and be pulled very tight around this entire corner. And so we don't uh, need those rivets to hold the fabric in place on, on this one. It's going to be very tight going across the inboard most rib. No holes.